Hey everybody, what's up? Ray here again, and welcome to Devlog episode 2 on my Minecraft map editing and terraforming plugin called World Shaper. I have made quite a bit of progress, and we will begin with the most important change since last time overall, and that is the fact that I have fixed the selection wand. It is now actually called selection wand. Uh, on a slightly less important note, I have implemented the undo and redo action. Now, jokes aside, this might actually not sound like that much, it's obviously a central feature and very important, but it might not sound like that much from a technical point of view, but it actually is, because there's quite a bit of technical change in the background, uh, quite a bit of refactoring that had to be done that fundamentally changes how actions are done in World Shaper, although this doesn't really have to concern you as a builder, but it does make things more consistent. In the past there were some inconsistencies with the replace command, with it not always working correctly, depending on the mask, and those are gone. Uh, and the new system also allows me to add new operations for players uh, much more easily, so that's great. But I know you want to see the feature, because of course you do, so let me show you. If I just very quickly select some uh, stuff here, something like this, and I just do uh, let's just replace the grass blocks here, uh, block, uh, and let's just replace them with stone and glass. And we just replace this. And I want you to make note of the actual pattern that this created. Remember, this is like a random pattern, this is just like 50% stone, 50% glass, and every block is randomly one or the other, right? And now I can do slash undo, and it just undoes that action. I can also do slash redo and note that this is now the exact same pattern that has been created here, right? This is because it didn't actually, you know, um, redo the command, it didn't actually call the command again, it uh, saved what action had been done, like what changes to the world has been done, undid those and redid those. So this is exactly the same as before. Now, being able to undo and redo your actions is very good and very important, of course, but we also all want to see the feature set expanded, right? And that's exactly what I did. A hint to that can be seen right over here. So, you can see that I have implemented more commands, like the walls command, for the area. So, if I just select this area here real quick, I can do slash walls, and then this, again, this can be any pattern, just like with the set or replace command. And I'm just using stone for simplicity here, because why waste time with other stuff, right? And it just creates the walls of the cuboid. If I just undo that real quickly, I can also do slash ceiling, and obviously I have to give it a pattern, <laughs> and it just puts the ceiling there. And uh, undoing that, I can also do slash floor, which does exactly what you would expect, and that almost looks like a chair right there, by the way. Uh, and the last command that I added is the hull command, which, as you expect, as you might expect, creates just the hollow shell of the area. Uh, all of these commands are already built to work with any area type. Remember, at the moment we only have the cubit area type, which is very sad, but uh, in the future there will be more, like the polygon area type, the 3D convex hull area type, and uh, probably others, which I can't think of off the top of my head. But all of those areas will be a thing, and these commands do immediately work with these uh, with these types of areas. Now, talking about area types, I want to quickly talk about selection types and area types. These were technically in last time, I just didn't talk about it, but uh, I have also expanded on it right now, so this is a good time to talk about it. So, as a player, you have your selection. Your selection is just the points that you have set. So if I just do positions, you can see this is my list of selection points, right? And these are just the two points that I selected right here. Now I can add other points to the selection by just using the slash pos command, and you can see it just adds more points to the selection. And now my selection is just bigger. And this selection will then define an area. The cubit area, for example, will always just take the first two positions and ignore any other positions that you might have, uh, and just spans the cuboid in between the first two positions. However, things like the uh, polygon area and the 3D convex hull area will, of course, use all the points. Now, there is something in this plugin called the selection type. The selection type 
will have no effect on your selection at all. It actually only affects how your selection want operates. So if I just do selection type, it'll tell me my current selection type is two positions and the following selection types are available, indefinite positions and two positions. And these will probably be the only ones for a very good while, if not forever, but we'll see about that. So two positions is the one that we have now. And it basically means a left click will always set the first position and the right click will always set the second position. And that is that, basically. Now, I can set the selection type to indefinite positions and side note, uh, the plugin will eventually get autocomplete, of course, so you don't have to type this out all the time. But I can set it to this and now, if I just do selection type again, it'll tell me that it's successfully set. And with the selection type indefinite positions, you can set an indefinite amount of positions. In this case, left clicking will set position 1 and clear your current selection. So if I now do slash uh, positions, you can see it only has one. And if I now right click, it will add more and more positions to it. You can see that in the chat down there. And if I just list them, you can see it just lists all of them. Left clicking again, and I only have one. So this is indefinite positions. Now. Generally speaking, you will very rarely change between the selection types manually because every area type has its default selection type attached to it. So if I say slash area type, I get the same thing but for the area type. I get your current area as type cuboid and the following areas are available, cuboid and points. So. Mm, the keyboard area, you know it, you've seen it here too, before and you know it from the other plugin that shall not be named. No, I'm kidding, it's well did it, right? Uh, but you know it, you know it, it's the keyboard area. Now, I have added the points area, mostly for testing purposes, but maybe it comes in useful to you guys. It's there if you need it. So if I just set uh, area type points, you can see it sets my area type to points and it immediately sets my selection type to indefinite points. It has already been that right now, but uh, you know, let's ignore that. And now, if I just select a few points and I do slash set a glass, it literally only sets the points. Like, this is the whole point of the points area type. It's just the same thing as my selection points. And that is it, right? Again, might be useful to you. It's very useful for me for testing and developing, but uh, yeah. Uh, this is a thing. And if I now switch back to the cuboid area type, if I say area type cuboid, it immediately sets my selection type back to two positions. So it will always switch back and forth the selection type to whatever is most reasonable or most useful for that specific area type. So you won't manually change the selection type very often yourself, but you know, um, you will just change your area type depending on what you need and the selection type will be adjusted accordingly. All right, so that is that. I know it might not sound like all that crazy much progress, but you gotta keep in mind that the plugin is still in its infancy and at the moment I'm still very heavily working on like technical background stuff, like the technical basis of the plugin, which is a lot of stuff that you just don't see on the outside. You know, a lot of code changes in the background, building up data structures and things like that. And once that is in, um, I will be able to add actual content much more uh, quickly. And you can see that in the roadmap. I will link it down below, by the way. Uh, so you will see that version 0 0.1, which I'm working on right now, is just for the technical basis for it to work. Version 0 0.2 will then contain a lot more content. So anyway, the point I want to make is that there has been a lot of progress, but most of it is invisible to the user and mostly just visible to me. But it has been done and that is really great because it allows me to do more visible progress in the future. So with that said, uh, thank you very much for watching. Join my Discord server if you want to give me feedback or talk to me and things like that. It's also linked in the description. And uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And see you next time. Goodbye.